Wow. Okay. Like this, this one caught my attention in the look at this DG area. You guys uh, posted this video here and it was a very enticing clickety clackety title called the career of Chris Roberts. Now, if you want some more information about the very, very beginnings of star citizen and how Chris Roberts made the decision to go forward with star citizen, uh, we have a nice interview here with a gentleman named Bucha. And uh, we talk about that and the VCs and the funding. And it's a really fun interview I had with him. We sat down for, I think, nearly two hours and talked about it. Uh, it's an older video. But I want to check this out and I want to see where this guy is going. I know something about this. This is the career of Chris Roberts <laughs> from his very first game to where he is now. So I hope you enjoy. Stick around and we'll see you on the other side. give you an understanding where we're going to beginning, the BBC Micro is a series of microcomputers and associated peripherals designed and built by Acorn Computers in the 1980s for the BBC Computer Literacy Project. Designed with an emphasis on education, it was notable for its ruggedness, expandability and the quality of its operating system. And accompanying a 1982 television series, the computer program featuring Chris Searle learning to use the machine broadcast on BBC2. As a teenager, Chris developed multiple games for the BBC Micro back in 1983 where his career in gaming had started. King Kong, the clone of Donkey Kong written by Adrian Stevens and published by Micro Power for the BBC Micro in 1983. It was ported to the Acon Electron and Amstrad CPC computers in 1984. Match Day is a football computer game published by Ocean Software in 1984, originally on the ZX Spectrum and then later released on the Amstrad CPC, BBC Micro and Commodore 64 systems. Wizardor is a video game developed by Imagine Software and released on the cassette tape for the BBC Micro home computer in 1985. It was developed by Chris Roberts, then aged 16, and his first commercially successful game, released by Imagine Software in February 1985. Chris Roberts and Philip Meller also designed a video game called Strikers Run for the BBC Micro and the BBC Master which was published by Superior Software in 1986. It was also later converted to the Acorn Electron. It is a 2D side-scrolling action game. It was well received, particularly for its graphics. Chris was also a designer in 1988 on a game called Ultima 5 Warriors of Destiny. Dude, Ultima. Yeah. all right nate see you buddy i'll see you man jesus i gotta say this sorry i didn't even have the chat on my apologies holy god ultima it is the fifth entry of the role-playing video game series ultima released in march 1988 it is the second in the age of enlightenment trilogy which was released on the amiga the apple II, the atari st the commodore 64 and 128 the dos fm towns nec p8801 nec pc9801 nes and the sharp x68000 remaining in 1988 he also helped design and direct a game called times of law it is an action role-playing game that was developed and published by origin systems for several platforms including pc commodore 64 128 zx spectrum amstrad cpc atari sc apple II, nes and amiga Moving on to 1990, he was also the director and designer again for a game called Bad Blood. It is a top view post-apocalyptic action role playing game from 1990 that was released on the MS-DOS and the Commodore 64. Continuing on in 1990, he stayed with Origin Systems, the developer and publisher, and went to direct, produce and design his own game known as Wing Commander, which a lot of you know if you're in the older generation. This is the first game in Chris Roberts' space flight simulation Wing Commander franchise by Origin Systems. The game was first released for the MS-DOS on September 26, 1990 and was later ported to the Amiga and CD32 with 256-bit of color. To the Sega CD, the Super Nintendo, 
Nintendo Entertainment System and re-released for the PC as Wing Commander 1 in 1994. An enhanced remake, Super Wing Commander, was made on the 3DO in 1994 and later ported to the Macintosh. Two expansion packs for the game were released, Wing Commander The Secret Missions in 1990 of November and Wing Commander The Secret Mission 2 Crusade in March 1991. After he was done with the original Wing Commander, he then went on to create Wing Commander 2 Vengeance of the Kilrathi. This is the first sequel of Chris Roberts' Wing Commander science fiction space combat simulator franchise on computer games Dude, produced by Origin this. Systems. Released in 1991, Wing Commander 2 retains much of the first game's core conventions <laughs> you and inter- You remember as it progressed and they started doing the cinematic cutscenes and everything, which by the way was pretty revolutionary in the gaming industry. You remember how you would play and you would play each level and then they'd reward you with the cinematic. Now everybody just wants to skip cinematics, but back in the 90s, you would have to play and play to get to the cinematic and you'd be like, holy shit, I got to the cinematic, right? Do you remember as like Wing Commander progressed and they've got Mark Hamill in as the role and the fucking Kelrathi came with those big old pup faces and shit? That was... <laughs> the stellar war between the Tehran Confederation yep. and the Philianoid warrior yeah, race called were. the Kilrathi. Multiple allies as a wingman and a wide variety of ships on both sides of the war. However, WC2 places a greater oh, yeah. emphasis on... Cooper's sp- right. Yeah, Ginger Rogers was the mechanic and she was a porn star. She still is. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, right. I remember. I was like, that was a big deal. I was like, holy shit. I'm like, she's a porn star. Well, okay. <laughs> Storytelling providing various sprite animated cutscenes and some of the industry's first examples of voice acting. He created two sequels out of The Vengeance of Kilrathi, known as Special Operations 1 and Special Operations 2. <laughs> Going right, on dude. from there, he then worked on a game called Strike Commander. He was the director, producer, and a designer on this game. It is a combat flight simulation video game designed by Chris <laughs> Roberts and released by Origin Systems for the PC DOS in 1993. It's a 3D graphic graphics engine used both uh, Gurod shading and texture mapping on both aircraft models and terrain, an impressive feat at the time. <laughs> Going back to the Wing Commander series, he then created Wing Commander Privateer, which That's is an adventure space training and combat simulator <laughs> going on from the original Wing Commander. It was released by Origin Systems in <laughs> September Cooper. 1993. The Privateer and its storyline is of the, the Wing Commander. Listen, Privateer was like a step above Wing Commander. Like, I loved Privateer. Like, Privateer was the jam, man. And then Private uh, Privateer 2 came out. And who was the guy? Hold on one second. Privateer 2, uh, uh, actor, a lot of the actors from from there, a lot of the actors from Wing Commander 3, 4, and Privateer 2 are literally actors in Squadron 42, by the way. Clive Owen. Clive Owen. Do you guys remember Clive Owen? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, that's how his career started, I think. I literally think Clive Owen's career started this way, through Privateer. I'm not quite sure about that. But I think it's one of his first roles ever. And I totally dug Privateer. I totally dug Privateer. I thought it was awesome game. And the different ship types and the trading that was in the game was fantastic. Obviously love Freelancer as well. The series, the player takes the role as Grayson Burrows, a privateer who travels through the Gemini sector, one of many sectors in the Wing Commander universe. Unlike Wing Commander, the player is no longer a Navy pilot, but a freelancer who can choose to be a pirate, a merchant, a mercenary, or any of the above in some combination. The player may follow the built-in plot, but there is a free adventure on his own. Even pretty after much, the Starlight. plot has been pretty completed, much. Privateer has two add-ons titled Speech Pack for 1993 and Righteous Fire in 1993. A sequel was released in 1996 titled Privateer 2 The Darkening. Moving on to 1994, he then created Wing Commander Armada, which again is a part of the Wing Commander series. It's created by Origin Systems and distributed Electronic Arts, also known as EA. Armada was the first of the Wing Commander series to feature multiplayer mode. The game was released shortly before Wing Commander 3, Heart of the Tiger, and features a new graphics engine capable of rendering fully 3D ship models, which is more powerful than the sprite-based engine used in Wing Commander 2, Vengeance of the Kilrathi. 
1993, he then moved on to Wing Commander 3, Heart of the Tiger. It's the third main title in his Wing Commander series. It developed and released by Origin Systems in December 1994. It's a departure from the previous games in the series in that it uses the extensive live-action full-motion video to add an interactive movie-style presentation to the space combat gameplay, emphasized by its adventurizing slogan, Don't watch the game, play the movie. The game's more than two hours of videos feature a number of prominent movie stars including Mark Hamill as Colonel Christopher Maverick Blair, Malcolm McDowell as Admiral Tarwin, John Reese davies as real, James Paladin Jesus. Target. I mean, Jesus. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I appreciate actually that this guy is just talking fast because it's relatively like just this boring slog. Could you imagine if you talk like me? Holy shit. You know? It's just that pause right there. <laughs> And Thrakarth, Na Karanka, and Tom Wilson as can we, Todd can Maniac. Can we fast motion this? I need a button, Pepe. That's 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 instead of slow motion. I need like a fast motion button. I want to hear what this sounds like in fast motion. Yeah, I need a, I need a, yeah, I need a fast motion uh, sound effect. You know, we're running behind on the sound effects. I know you're touring everywhere, Pepe. I know you're touring everywhere. And you don't have time to put into this, but like, if you could please just give me like a fast motion sound effect, please. Marshall. For those of you who didn't know some of these actors, Mark Hamill is best known as Luke Skywalker in the Star Wars series. Malcolm McDowell was best known for portraying Alex the Large in A Clockwork Orange. John Rhys-Davies was also known as portraying Salah Muhammad in Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones in 1981. If you're in the younger generation and you haven't watched Back to the Future, Thomas F. Wilson was best known for playing Biff Tannen, Griff Tannen, and Buford Mad Dog Tannen in the Back to the Future trilogy, so I recommend you go check that out. Tim Curry also did some voice acting, which he is known for playing it in Pennywise. He's also known for being in Home Alone 2. He was also in the Scary Movie series. Going on to 1996, Chris then began work on Wing Commander 4, The Price of Freedom, which is the fourth game in the Wing Commander series. It was produced by Origin Systems and released by Electronics Arts for the PC in 1996 and the PlayStation in 19. 97. Not only known for his games, he was also known for movies as well, as a director, an actor, and an executive producer, and a producer. In the movie Wing Commander in 1999, he did play a small part of a cameo, which also had a nice little cast with Fred Prince Jr., who played as Fred in Scooby-Doo in 2002, Matthew Lillard, who played as Shaggy in Scooby-Doo, and a list of many more impressive actors. Moving on to the year 2000, Chris Roberts and his brother Aaron then worked on a game known as Starlancer. It's a space-based science fiction flight simulator computer game created by Aaron and Chris, developed by Warthog Games under the auspices of Digital Anvil. The game released on Windows and Dreamcast. The game received generally favorable reviews on both platforms, according to the review aggregation website. Chris Kramer of Next Gen said of the PC version in its July 2000 release, you'll definitely love Starlancer on its own as an appetite for next year's Freelancer. In 2001, Chris was part of a project called Conquest Frontier Wars. He was a producer and the writer for the game. The game was published by Ubisoft. It's a real-time strategy game released in 2001 by Ubisoft and developed by Fever Pitch Studios. A good amount of the development was done at Digital Anvil in Austin, Texas, a startup developer originally owned by Chris Roberts, Aaron Roberts, Eric Patterson, John Miles, Tom By the way, I was completely muted during that whole time because of Pepe. I would just like to say I would like to shame Pepe right now. Hold on a second. Shame. Shame. I was giving very, shame. very vital, important opinions about what I thought about this video, Pepe, and I just was squelched by you. Uh, so first off, we, we, did, we did need to do that shame bell. I was trying to say, ladies and gentlemen, that... That was a fast, fastest, fast, fast break. Okay. So if I get some applause for the fastest, fast, fast break. <laughs> it wasn't just the regular fast. It was fasty, fast, fast, fastest. Uh, but I will say this. Whether it's regular fast or super accelerated, holy shit fast, they're both as boring. <laughs> I understand what's happening here. We're giving a list of the games that Chris designed and was part of, was creator of. I get it. But whether it's this type of fast here or the fasty of fastest, uh, I feel like I'm still having a hard time. So we will. We are going back to regular fast, right? It's all informative, though. That will give applause to the informative. List. I'm not trying to listen. As I always say on stream here, Fingers, I, listen, I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm just naturally an asshole. Can we have applause for that? Okay. 
It comes very easy to me. <laughs> Let's keep going, if we can. Uh, there is another seven minutes of this left. Tony Zurek, Martin Davies, and Robert Rodriguez. In 2003, Chris went back to Freelancer, which was a sequel to Star Lancer. It's a space trading in combat simulation video game developed by Digital Anvil and published by Microsoft Game Studios. It is a chronological sequel to Digital Anvil's Star Lancer, a combat flight simulator released in 2000. The game was initially announced by Chris Roberts in 1999, <laughs> and following many production schedule mishaps and a buyout of Digital Anvil by Microsoft, it was eventually released in March 2003. Then in 2004, Chris Roberts was the executive producer for the movie The Punisher, which stars <laughs> Thomas Jane and John Travolta as the main characters. It's about an undercover FBI agent becomes a vigilante and sets out one. to unleash his wrath upon the corrupt businessman who slaughtered his entire family at a reunion. Then up until 2009... Listen, listen I surely like that Punisher better than the other Punisher that they released, you know. Uh, Tom Jane was a good Punisher. For those of you who don't know who Tom Jane is, he was the dude with the detective hat with the fedora in The Expanse. Uh, and I have to say, I did actually enjoy that Punisher. I did. Who slaughtered his entire family at a reunion. <laughs> then up until 2009, he was the producer and executive producer of many movies. Even this guy can't believe that he's talking about it this long. <laughs> Did you hear that pause? He's like, he, he wanted to laugh right there. As the Jacket, which is a 2005 American science fiction psychological thriller film directed by John Mabry, starring Adrian Brody, Kira Knightley. And in 2005, he was the producer of a movie called The Big White, is a 2005 black comedy. What? He was the producer of uh, Robin Williams and Woody Harrelson film? Why have I never heard of this? Has anybody seen The Big White? It must not have been that good. It must have not the been film good. directed by Mark Mylord, starring Robin Williams, Holly Hunter, Giovanni Ribisi, Woody Harrelson, Tim Blake Nelson, W. Earl Brown, and Alison Lohman. In 2006, right. was the producer of a movie called Lord of War, which is a 2005 Lord of War American was crime drama film. Listen, Rib listen, this is this is Cage at his best, man. <laughs> by the way, the new Cage film where he's actually Nicolas Cage in the movie is really good. It's really funny. But this Lord of War, this was good. Like, Lord of War was, like, primo Cage. Like, this was the perfect role for Cage, man. Written, produced, and directed by Andrew Nicole and co-produced by the starring Nicholas Cage. Yeah, I love I love. In Lord 2006, of War. was the executive producer of a movie called Ask the Dust, which is a 2006 romantic drama film based on the 1939 book Ask the Dust. Ooh, you're asking the hard questions right now. Oh my God, Limitless. That's a good one, dude. That's a good That's a good one to throw in the ring, man. If I had to absolutely choose, I'm going to have to have time. I'm going to have to, on the weekend, I'm going to have to take Chrissy out for a dinner uh, that I won't be able to afford. <laughs> peanut butter sandwiches. And over the peanut butter sandwich candlelight dinner that I will prepare for her, I am going to slowly think about that. That is something I will have to seriously take my time on. To to to, that is a great uh, boy face off, dude. By John Fante, the film was written and directed by so Robert Town, Tom Cruise, it, Paul Wagner. Cruise Wagner Productions served as one of the film's producers. <laughs> the film was released on a limited basis I don't on know, March Con. 17th, I don't know, 2006 dude. and was entered into the 28th Moscow International Film Festival. Again in 2006, he was the producer of a movie called Lucky Number no. 11. I saw this. It is also known great. as The Wrong Man in Australia, The Seven Affair in Spain, Hitman for Hire in Mexico, Poor Bruce and Willis, Checkmate dude. in Brazil. Is a 2006 Man, neo no I'm all broken up about Bruce Willis. Now I can't believe the shit that's happening to him. With that. I didn't even know that there was something called aphasia, but damn, if I'm not scared now of it, because I'm a hypochondriac <laughs> and a germaphobe. Dude. Dude, this aphasia is disgusting and ridiculous, man. You just basically forget everything. You forget how to communicate with people. You, you, I, uh, it's happening to me right now. Do you hear this? It's happening to me. Noir action crime thriller film directed by Paul McGowan. 
yeah. and written by Jason Samovic. That's why there's no the film God. stars Josh Hartnett, <laughs> like no God. Morgan Freeman, Ben Kingsley, Lucy Liu, Stanley Tucci, and Bruce Willis. It's revolving around an innocent man dragged into the middle of a war being plotted by two of New York's rival crime bosses. And in 2007, executive oh, produced a movie called Who's Your Caddy? It's you a 2007 Mortal, uh, American Mortal comedy War. film directed by Don Michael Paul and starring Big Boy, Lil Wayne, Andy Malokinus, Fell Zone Love. What the fuck is up with this cast? What the fuck is up? How does Andy Mal- M- how does Andy Mal- 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 Malinakis get into this one, man? <laughs> Terry Crews, Tony Cox, Jeffrey Andy Jones, like and Jesper Parnevik. In 2008, he was a producer on a movie which is known as Outlander. It's a science fiction fantasy action horror film written and directed by Howard McCain, starring Jim Cazil, Sophie Miles. Was that good? I never heard of it. I'm writing these down. I am. I, I got the big white because I've never seen that with Robin Williams uh, and Woody Harrelson. So I wrote down the big white. I'm gonna write. Um, I'm gonna write down Outlander too. What's it called? Just Outlander. Outlander. Jack Huston. John Hurt and Ron I'm check Perlman. These out. I, I've never Last seen that but either. not least, in 2009, it's he was it. the it's executive worth, producer you, of a you, movie folks. called Blackwater Transit, which is an unreleased 2009 okay, crime right. drama film based on the novel of the same name by Carsten Stroud. It is directed is. by Tony Kay and stars the ensemble cast, including Lawrence Fishburne and Carl Urban. You know, I was like, oh, it's a book, but I love books. I used to read books all the time, but in the bathroom. Now I don't read read as much, you know? I used to sit in the bathroom when when I got stressed out because nobody's gonna bother you in the bathroom. You shut the door, uh, you know, sit down with the book, and I'd read like three or four chapters. I used to read all the time. It was my study. It was my personal study. I don't do as much anymore. I'm always out and about. I'm always running around. You know, I need my I need my my study back. I need my I need my study back. See, uh, generally now I I see a book and I'm like ah no, and I'm thinking to myself why why. Who are you? You used to love to read. You used to love to to, to take a good old time in the bathroom and read a book. <laughs> Leaving all that behind, in 2012, he founded the company Cloud Imperium Games, which is developing Star Citizen and Squadron 42. Star Citizen is an in-development multiplayer space trading and combat simulation game. The game is being developed and published by Cloud Imperium Games, for Microsoft Windows, an extended retry of the unrealized plans of for Freelancer. Star Citizen is being led by the director Chris Roberts. The game was announced via a private crowdfunding page in September 2012 and was later joined in October 18th, 2012 by a successful Kickstarter campaign which drew in over $2 million. Pre-production of the game began in 2010 with production starting in 2011. Star Citizen has become a highly criticized during its long production process both for the fact there is still no clear release date and for the challenges backers who have abandoned the project have faced in receiving a refund. The launch of the game was originally anticipated for 2014 but was repeatedly delayed in 2013. Cloud Imperium Games began releasing parts of the game known as modules to provide players with the opportunity to experience gameplay features prior to the release. The latest of these modules known as the Persistent Universe was made available for testing to pre-purchase in 2015 and continues to receive updates after more than a decade in development. No projected date for the commercial release of Star Citizen is currently given. After the initial Kickstarter ended, Cloud Imperium Games continued to raise funds through the sale of ships and other in-game content and is now noted for being the highest crowdfunded video game and one of the highest funded crowdfunding projects overall, hand raising over $500 million as of September 22. Such methods of generating crowdfunded revenue have however led to criticisms and legal issues surrounding the project. In addition to crowdfunding, marketing is now also funded through external investment having received... Okay, I, I'm not being an asshole. I am kind of, but man, this is... Who is this? Hold on a second. I want to give him some love though. Like this this, this took some work and I can... Pre- Lawless Baron. And dude, I am so sorry if you're part of this community, dude. Like, you know, because I am not trying to be an asshole, but like, I need to give some constructive criticism. So, I understand. Like, think about the amount of, (laughs) just think about the amount of content this guy has to go through 
in 16 minutes. He's got to, he's got to read this, right? He's got to read it, but we need some, we need an affect. We need some tone. We need some intonation. We need, we need some points of levity. We need like, when you're going through this kind of information, man, you've got to have like, if you're going through a marathon like this, sometimes man, don't try and sprint the marathon. You see what I'm saying? He did a lot of really good research, but I think by him trying to rush through this video, it did the exact opposite of what it should be doing, which is to entertain you and inform you. So we got the information, but we don't have the entertainment. You see what I'm saying? So he's trying to cram it all in. This is, by the way, this is, this is good information. <laughs> this, is, this is my experience. You know, this is 10 years worth of experience here that I'm trying to give you here, lawless baron. And, you know, I hope you take this constructively on, on a video like this, right? Where you, where you got all this information, it's great to inform, but you have to focus on the entertainment as well. So I get what you're trying to do. You're trying to do like a nubifier on this where you're trying to like condense and shorten it down. But you know, just based on the amount of content here that you have to go through, that it can't be like that. You know, it just can't be like that. I respect what he's trying to do. Just give us the information, right? But because of the way that this is formatted and because of this amount of, of information, he should just not worry about the length of this. And he should actually try to be a little bit more, you know, it's a marathon. He's sprinting in a marathon. You see what I'm saying? And when you sprint in a marathon, what do you do? You don't finish the marathon. And I would say that if he looks on the analytics of this video, he's probably going to see that not a lot of people watch for the longevity of the entire video. And that's because of exactly what I'm saying. The amount of information was monumental. It was a marathon. And he went at it like a sprinter. And what ends up happening is, while we respect the fact that he's trying to cram as much information to the least amount of time, there's way too much information for that to happen. So what you have to do then is you have to actually put points of interest in a video that has this much information, whether it's the way the inflection or the tone of your voice, changing something up, maybe throwing in a couple surprises here and there of different things or the way you present things it has to, it has to pop more. It has to pop a little bit more. $63.25 million as of March 2020. Squadron 42 is a single player game set in the same universe, was initially announced in the Kickstarter as an included campaign in Star Citizen, but is now intended to be a standalone product. So for those of you who didn't really know the history and the career of Chris Roberts, I hope this gave you some sort of a closure and helped you understand where he's come from and where he's been throughout his gaming and actual producing career. I hope this was a bit of an insight for you. I'm sorry I messed up some of the names. It was pretty hard to pronounce some of these names. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of this. That seems very genuine. Seems like a really cool dude. I mean, he's doing well for himself. He's got 9,000 subscribers, so he's doing very well for himself. So who am I, right? Who am I to say? Just don't listen to me, Lawless. I don't know what I'm talking about.